My Black Forest Brownie trifle is really sumptuous gorgeousness on a grand scale, not unlike the ones I'll be avoiding in the new year. Rather than fanning around making the brownies, because quite frankly, who can be asked? I've taken the liberty of ordering these from an artisan bakery called Bad Brownie. A rather lovely, chunky girth of chocolate gooey goo goo. So now, I'm going to delicately and serenely slice into the log. And I'm going to put the pieces to bed in this somewhat delightful Venetian trifle dish. It was actually gifted to me by my mother-in-law in the hopes that one of my children will smash it to smithereens, fighting for the last piece. Now, I like my trifles to be extra boozy. After all, it is Christmas. And sometimes booze is the only way to make it through the plague of people that descend on my London muse abode like dirty, dirty locusts. Now, the quiche in this trifle is really what carries it on the buoyant waves of culinary delight. In fact, I could probably just do away with all the other ingredients completely. I used to get my quiche from Waitrose, but the bottles there are so frightfully small that I've had to instruct my local wine atelier to order this directly from Germany. Regretfully, though, I have ordered so much that I've run out of room in my wine cellar. I've had to repurpose the guest bathtub. I'm going to pour in a good quantity, not too much, just enough so that you can taste the sharp, fruity flavour. Not to fret, you can go quite liberally with this, as I like to say. It's not about the quantities, it's about the layering. So what I've got here is some luscious Madagascan vanilla bean custard from my favourite boutique grocery Whole Foods, or, you know, you could just slum it and get it from Harrods. And while that warms up, I can get on with some heavy pounding. When ready, the custard should be firm but not immobile, still a soft wobble from within, like an 18th century courtesan's thigh biscuit. Now, honestly, don't worry if this starts to look like roadkill, or turns into mushy gobslop anyway. And finally, we need some cream. And as you all know, I'm partial to a shortcut or seven. So it's always good to have some squirty cream on hand, which might have left in the bedroom. But here it is. Uh, just to have, you know, in case you destroy your kitchen, trying to whip it yourself, which of course, I've never done. Actually, why not? I'll add the last vestiges of my kish. Give some full throttle high octane that's sure to fire up the lady loins. Once the cream has acquired a silhouette, not unlike the soft peaks of my pillowy bosom, I'm going to let it languish over the custard like a soft pillowy duvet. Now I've pre-soaked these ruby globules in advance, which has allowed them to drink in so much kirsch that even the slightest caress will see them explode in a godlike fruity nectar. And to finish, drop a few of the cherries and allow their oozy syrupy goodness to seep into the whipped mound. And that's it.